Good afternoon. Oh, quiet crowd. Good afternoon. So, um, thanks. Uh, this morning had a had a good meeting with the uh, with the team. Uh, kind of recapped the last three games and level set on the expectations and just told those guys just like always that you know we have to continue to get better. Uh, tried to put some things into perspective. You know, you know, you have a team that's picked to win the Super Bowl, gets blown out the next week. Like right now, it's about who can get better the quickest and. That's just what we have to do. We have to get back to the fundamentals where we talk about tackling and running and, you know, being able to move the ball and also take away is definitely a huge part of it. But guys are ready to work. They're excited. And uh, today it's all about NEP. It has nothing to do with anyone else. It has everything to do with, you know, self-scout and, and really just working on things that continue to show up on a game-after-game -game basis. Do you feel like you guys are still searching for your identity as to what kind of team you are? I, I think that, you know, I think – I don't want to jump to conclusions because after we controlled the line of scrimmage throughout the preseason and also controlled the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball, you know, the first two games and then to sit here and, and overreact on the third game and controlling the line of scrimmage, I don't want to do that. I still think we have a tough physical football team and and that's my expectation and that's also their expectation is to go out there and and establish your toughness and, and then by the four, in the fourth quarter, hopefully you have a chance to win. Ron, you mentioned uh, resetting expectations at team meeting today. Um, one, why is that important to you? And B, what were the expectations that were reset? Well, the you know, that's a good question. And maybe I misspoke in saying resetting expectations, but just reminding them of what we said all the way back in the spring of what type of team that we want to be. And, you know, went in on a short week and, and didn't perform the way we wanted to, but it was more of a reminder. I probably should have said it that way, a reminder of what we said we were and how we have to play uh, play winning football. We'll sprinkle a little bit in there in the 49ers, but but once again, it's about us, and this is a bonus day for us. And, you know, the players are off tomorrow, and then it's a normal week. Well, normal-ish, we leave on Friday. Um, but it's just about the things that continue to show up uh, day after day, game after game. What's the conversation with the offensive line in the week of the game like that? You did say, you know, control the line of scrimmage the first two games. Yeah. We talked a little bit today about how the pass protection was struggling. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, you know, upfront conversation. And, you know, I have the relationship and so do the, the coaches have the relationship with those guys where you can be very transparent and open. Like this isn't this isn't good enough. You know, I I show on one of my slides this morning was just a picture of a mirror. And this is our jobs as coaches is to put the mirror in front of the player's face and remind them like what it really is. Uh, it's not about, you know, your mom or your brother, or your cousins telling you, you know, it's not your fault. It's all of our fault. And, and once again, it starts with me. You mentioned the importance of turnovers. I know Kyle Duggar mentioned in the summer the emphasis on punching the ball on every play. Have you seen that same type of effort, and what can you do to start getting those turnovers? Yeah, we've definitely seen that same effort. I would say as a player, uh, no matter what level you're at, um, turnovers come in bunches. That's and that's how it happens. You know, you get one, and then all of a sudden, you know, you're you're getting three here, four here, but they they definitely come in bunches. And you know, my reminder to those guys is just keep just keep attacking the ball, and and they'll come. Flip side of that, do you have a philosophy on offensive side about how you handle fumbling? Yeah, I mean that's that's a huge part of it. Look, it's no secret that you know Dre has fumbled the ball three times in three games, and you know now you become a target. And every single team, not just for Ramondre, but for everyone who uh, handles the ball, like we're all going to be targets until we can show that we can protect the ball. Uh, so he'll he'll be out there today, uh, hopefully moving around a little bit, and we'll see we'll see how he responds the next day. You said pregame last week that Kendrick Bourne is making good progress. Yeah, he's making great progress, and uh, he's running fast. He looks good in his routes. We'll just you know when he's ready to to be out there, he'll be out there. So if he's healthy, would you expect him to slide back in as the starting left guard, or Michael Jordan keep that spot? Um, I'm not sure. We'll just have to kind of. I mean, once again, it's still early in the season, and we'll just have to see how it goes. Um, you know, low. It's interesting. You know, he's he's kind of been in and out of the lineup all the way back in the summer. Um, we'll just, you know, when we say we'll work these guys out in individuals, like all that stuff is good. But you have to see how they present the next day. Um, I wish I could sit here and give you a timeline, but I can't on right. on that player. Um, I do. He'll he'll be out there. I'm not sure just how much he'll do. Uh, Gerard, on the radio this morning, when you were talking about the pass pro issues, I think you said the biggest one right now is just seeing everything through like the same set of eyes. Is there a way that you can simplify protections for those guys, or is it really like they just need to figure it out? No, nah, it's it's more about reps, and I feel 
that you know the protections that we run i mean everyone i mean a lot of teams run the same protection and what i showed them this morning anytime you have a free runner through the a or the b gap it gives the quarterback no chance and we have to be inside out in all of our protections and if the quarterback can see you know an edge defender you know being a free player then he can most of the time make everyone else right but that hasn't been the case here I know you had uh, you know an, an early B gap pressure that got through, but I think most of the unblocked ones against the Jets were you know nickel safety and then a couple edge rushers on those boots. I mean it, that seems to be problematic as well. Is there one solution, a couple solutions for that? Well, just the boot play in particular. Sometimes you have protected boots and sometimes you have unprotected boots. And uh, w what I will say is like you're anticipating a player to do one thing, and sometimes they change that up, and it goes back to. You know, those tendency breakers, those guys, all the other teams, they self-scout as well. So we just have to get better as a whole. Our screen game has to get better. We have to continue to run the ball. And and also, uh, you know, the intermediate passing. Got to do a better job with that. I think people would be curious, like, the tone you try to set as a head coach yeah. after a game like that one. How would you describe it? Is it patience? Is it urgency? Like, how do you convey the, try to convey the message? Yeah, I always tell the guys, you know, win, lose, or draw, we have to be ready to change the page. And the NFL, especially early in the season, is so up and down, and no one really knows who's good, who's bad. Even when the schedule releases come out, just because you were good the past year doesn't mean you're going to be good this year. And the same thing, just because you were bad last year doesn't mean you're going to be bad this year. And so, you know, for me, it's always been about just changing the page and moving on to the to the next one. And this is why, you know, we always talk about, especially at the quarterback position, not getting too high or getting too low. Like, let's try to, you know, handle winning and handle losses, um, you know, the right way and, and learn from those mistakes. When it comes to containing quarterbacks in the pocket, you know, with defensively, do you feel like that has been an issue because of scheme related stuff or more like discipline stuff? On, on the I think it's a combination of the two. And. You know, we as a whole, we just have to do a, a better job keeping the quarterback in the pocket. That was one of the last reminders, even with Rodgers, is uh, let's keep this guy in the pocket. And, you know, he just had had free roam too many times. And we, we'll get that corrected. What about the middle of the Yeah, um, you know, some of those were, you know, just based on zone coverages. You know, we're on man-to-man, -man, we can get on them. But when you play quarterbacks – or offenses that do a bunch of different things. Like sometimes zone is the best way to go. And we have to do a better job getting to our depth and make them take the check down. And we just got to you know go, go up and tackle those guys. But that's more of a, you know, I guess it's a combination of the two. It seems like line games have been a pretty big issue for the offensive line as well the past couple of games. What are your thoughts on that? And how do you kind of measure expectations knowing that there's been so many guys in and out of play? Yeah, I mean, you bring up a great point. Like going back, you know, going back to the beginning of training camp, you know, well, let me just go back even further. When you have a good offensive line, like it's not about the individuals, about those guys being able to pass off, pass off those twist games and things like that. And going back to seeing the picture out of the same set of eyes. And we've uh, we've had guys in and out, in and out of the lineup. And we just got to get some continuity there and, and you know, go from there. Defensively, I know you faced three really good quarterbacks. Their numbers, when you guys rush five or more, are all very, very good. Do you see any common themes there when you guys choose to bring pressure, like real pressure that, you know, this has been an issue for us when we want to do that? Um, you know, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it in those words. I would say, you know, as far as defense is concerned, which has been this way for a long time, we're a game plan defense that spins the dial. And sometimes, you know, you can get those big negative plays and there are other times where we just don't get home. And so just marrying up, uh, marrying up the rush and the coverage. I think that's the, the more important thing. You know, what you, a lot of the, you've known a lot of guys in the room for a long time now. Um, I'm wondering how you've seen them. I don't have any practice yet today how you've seen them just react to that game and now having a couple of days off. How do they strike the balance of players between being pissed off and being optimistic and turning the page, as you mentioned? Like, yeah. How do they do that? Well, it, it was easy this time because they had three days off. You know, man, it's mandatory by the league. And so you can kind of sulk and be sad about it maybe the next day. But after that, it's time to change the page. And I would say the guys came in today with good energy, and, and hopefully you know that shows on the practice field. How did you handle days like that as a player? Um, you know, you go back and, and watch the film and you just have a, you know, honest conversation with yourself, like how you played. And uh, I know a lot of the guys, they, they did the exact same thing. And, you know, there was some good, there was some more bad, obviously, in the Thursday Thursday game. And we have an opportunity coming up this week against a good football team. Yeah, I know that Christian Gonzalez has had some tough matchups so far. What have you seen from him? Yeah, just, you know, a guy that continues to just keep fighting. Um, he may not say a lot. He has all the skill sets to be one of the top players in the league at his position. And I think, um, you know, he still has room to grow and he's going to be a very good player for us. You just mentioned that he had eight, eight days off. In terms of 
setting the schedule for this year. How much is in your hands? We, we want to keep it as a normal work week. And so, like I said, you know, those guys, even though I sit here and say those guys are off, they'll still get in their little groups and, and watch film on their own. And, and that's what you want from a team. Things going to remain status quo with the quarterback position and how you operate based on what you told us on Friday? Yeah, so right now, you know, Jacoby, Jacoby's still our starting quarterback. And even after the game, you know, I watched that film the whole way, you know, back home, got in early in the morning and still felt the same way. We have to support him uh, across the board, you know, as a coaching staff, uh, players, we have to support him and, and keep him clean and, and hopefully give him opportunities to look, you know, look for the open receiver. Uh, no, no update there. Coach, it seems like offensively you dial back some of the pure drop back passing game on early downs, but on third downs, obviously, you can't really avoid it. Is it realistic sometimes knowing you have sometimes backups on the line to say, maybe we start this progression low to high just to get the ball out quicker? Or do you really always want to go high to low to force the defense? No, to you, you can absolutely like protect the quarterback and protect the offensive line through scheme. <clears throat> I think it's, you know, it's a good question. Um, you know, what I will say is 90s, like the short game always will protect those guys up front. Uh, but I also think there's a combination. Like you can't just sit there and try to spread the field horizontally without spreading it vertically. And then, I mean, going back to the run game, I think it's all built off that. Thanks, guys.